All right, perfect. So as I mentioned, what we're going to be doing is we're going to go through a complete overview of the upcoming Projects V5. And inside of here, we have several key enhancements. In general, what we've done with projects is we've bought it completely up to date with the standards of our new V5 application technology. And this includes all the small visual improvements you see, in addition to the standards like moving reports up here, breaking down and giving you the detailed advanced search capabilities, and everything like that. And I'll run through kind of the standard features that have been added. But there's those standard features, but with projects in particular, we had quite a few unique features. And specifically, the biggest item that we changed, the biggest combination of items, is whereas the existing project management system forced you to pick specific start and end times for every project and every task, the new system is meant to be much more fluid and dynamic. And what that means is when you put together a project in the new system, you are no longer having to pick the exact delivery time for each task. And if you reschedule, you no longer have to change each and every task. Now the way that the system works is based on dependencies within your tasks. So you'll be able to schedule an order of completion across all of your various tasks, and then the dependency will determine the exact start and end date. And that allows you to get automatic project scheduling. So the idea is that you kind of program in these templates of your standard project flows, and if you have to delay a task or something like that, it all happens, happens completely automatically. So let's go ahead and let's start off by taking a look at that. This is the best feature that we've got coming out in Project V5. So I have some sample websites. So you can see like the whole search interface is now updated. I can change column widths. I can change the columns displayed if I'd like. So I can throw in, show like the billing method of the projects and stuff. And now exposes them here. So you can kind of put together your own dashboards. And I'll go ahead and I'll grab one of these existing ones. So I'll just take the Maxilon custom website development project. And you'll see we have the new side panel view. So you're able to quickly browse through projects. You can get their basic status. And I can also throw on a note, or I can send an email out, or um, add a follow-up onto this project. All those standard features are now available within one click. So I can easily schedule activities here. Or we still have the classic detailed view, just like the other apps. So here's the detailed view of the project. You can see it's still generally the same. We've gone through, we've done a nice little overhaul, added some better looking icons and everything like that, just visual improvements. But most of the same kind of features are still in place. One change you will see is on the overview tab, um, we now have the full field customization capabilities that we have in the other V5 apps. So you can add, remove, completely control this. So these are some custom fields, for example. And you'll see we still have the milestones and sub-projects. Done some general interface improvements here. Everything is definitely optimized for performance. So the whole new system is going to run drastically faster than the existing system. And you'll see everything just looks a little bit cleaned up, a little bit more modern. So it's all brought up to date. But let's dive through the meat of it. One of the key changes is we used to have a Gantt chart displayed right here on the top of the overview tab. And it was a very basic Gantt chart. You couldn't even make changes from it. And that's all changed. The Gantt chart is now one of the best features of our project management system. And here you can see what we've got is the visual breakdown of our entire project flow. So this is much more comprehensive than our existing Gantt chart, where now we can see it's color-coded, so you can see milestones versus the tasks that are completed inside of them. And you can see the order of completion. Here you can see I have a project that is about as complex as they get. I've got all these different dependencies going on. And what this allows us to do now is actually change the project schedule. So let's say that we have this task. We have to finalize the discovery document get some basic details. And let's say that we actually need to delay this task. And we want to see how that would impact the rest of the project schedule. Now I can just click on this, drag it over, and you can see the entire project schedule is instantly updated. When we did that, every single task inside of this project that was further down the dependency chain was automatically updated. So we can hop over to the milestone view, or we can hop over to the tasks view. And every single one of these start dates, end dates, it now matches up with the new project schedule with that four or five day delay that we just added. So that, you can see, is just much, much smoother than we used to operate with. While the bones are all still in the same places, and we still have a Gantt subtasks, the entire scheduling system, like the ability to not have to set start and end dates, that's one of the key improvements here. So this is just basic scheduling if I need to like move stuff around, uh, make stuff start earlier or later. Very nice how it reschedules everything. Um, you can definitely zoom in, zoom out. So if you have these longer projects, I can get out to like a, a yearly view if I need to. This project's only like a month or two long, so not that great there. 
and I can zoom all the way in. So if you have a very short project, I can get down to the point where I just have a few days right here. But you can see it's not that valuable when I have these tasks that last a week at a time. So very, very flexible. Whole Gantt chart can be printed. And you see it's very responsive as far as the speed, the interaction, like all these changes, they happen very quickly. Um, this is one of the major focuses of the system. Otherwise, if you want to get some more some details from here, the Gantt chart also has this table view. Drag it on over, and we can change details from here. So I can delete records out of here. I can change dates on things manually. I can change the assignment of people. It's very, very flexible. So this should just cut the amount of time it takes to manage projects in Aptivo down by a huge margin. We now think that we are one of the leaders in the Gantt chart area. Okay, so the Gantt chart, one of the key focuses, and you see how it's paired up with the scheduling system. So let's hop over and let's take a look at the milestones. Just take a quick little tour through. You can see some nice visual improvements. Um, we've sped up the, the process of putting together milestones and tasks a lot by utilizing our new side panel system. So you'll see I can easily edit a milestone by just clicking inside of the side panel now. So if I want to update the status of it. You also see the side panel displays a list of each task. I'll click on a task there. Or I can expand. I can click on a task right here. There's a side panel just for the tasks. Once again, I can make modifications. And the point is just to make all the actions much faster, adding notes, documents, marking things as complete. And we still have these classic detailed views that you are, might be accustomed to in the current system. I do want to point out one kind of technical change on the way that milestones and subtasks are handled in the new system. Previously, the milestone and the subtask both had their own start date and end date, and you could specifically set them. But, I mean, really, that's just extra work. So what we've done now is the, the parent task, so if I create a series of subtasks underneath this, then I can go through, I can create a list of several different subtasks. The idea is that then the parent task becomes a container. So rather than having its own start date and end date, it'll just have the start date of the very first task, and then the end date will be the end date of the very last task to be completed. So it really just becomes like a container um, for all those other tasks. And it's the same thing for a milestone. So you never have to worry about setting the start date or end date of a parent task for a milestone because it'll just change dynamically with the, the duration of whatever's contained inside of it. Okay, so we've got the milestone view. We've got the Gantt chart view. See so just general visual improvements. Um, we've now separated out the budget details. So you have a standalone budget tab. We're going to be adding some additional reporting and status details in here as well. Team tab remains generally the same, nothing too big here. Same thing with the scope tab, no major adjustments. We still have our 360 feature. We've added a couple more apps in here. And you see we have introduced the follow-ups feature onto the project, although keep in mind one of the capabilities that we have in new V5 is the ability to disable some features. So most of these are kept generally intact. All this should function basically the same as you're used to in production. But let's talk a little bit about the customizability. So some of the things you couldn't do in the existing app um, were to remove elements. So a lot of people might think, well, I'm just looking for simple project management, and I'd like to remove a lot of these elements. And previously that was not an option, but now we can actually remove things from this left column, we can remove things from this navigation right here, and just generally kind of clean it up. So we now have the settings area just like we had before, but there's additional settings that are now available. So for example, if I don't want to utilize the follow-ups feature, I can now completely shut that feature off, no problem at all. And now I just don't have to worry about having follow-ups in projects. And in the left column, let's say that you, you never work with billable projects. So you just want to go ahead and you can hide that. And maybe I want to hide this, and I don't use project priority. So I can actually just remove those views, and I can even rearrange these items if I would like to make them display differently. So now you have all these different interface customization options. So when I go to projects, see it's updated over here, kind of simplified a little bit. And yeah, so we're all set up. The other key change is I mentioned the field customization. So previously you could, you could create your own fields in Aptivo. I could create custom fields. So like adding this text field and this date field, this was definitely possible before. But now what we can do is we can actually put custom fields up in here we have field security, and we have field sharing with the other applications. So let me show you what that means. So I can go into the, the page now called Customize App, 
and this is the drag and drop editor. So here we can see all these different fields and uh, you can see that custom section that we had. So maybe I want to rename this. And maybe I want to want to take these default fields like timesheets approved by and I'd rather put that down there because I don't want that appearing on the very top. So I can actually move these things around, make them appear wherever I would like them to show up. And I can even create my own custom fields. And you'll see here we have the new security and sharing features. They work the same as the other apps, but just as a quick recap, what this means is I could take this section of fields. Maybe I have some payment related information, or let's say if I'm working on a website for a customer, and I have like some usernames and passwords in order to access their systems, but it's sensitive information. So potentially I only want that visible to certain managers in my company. I can actually enable the security, and then you'll see I have the option to select the privilege. So this allows me to restrict it, so I can create a special privilege called like project um, credentials. And then inside of the employees app, you can assign this project credentials privilege to only specific people. And then you have the option to either make these fields completely invisible to other users, or you could just make them read only to other users. So definitely a lot more flexibility in hiding features and hiding elements and different details in this new version. A lot of attention on security. Um, another thing we have is if I have a completely custom section. So let's create a brand new section. Let's call this, um, let's stake on the web design project. So maybe I do have something like a um, FTP username. So I've got these couple fields and let's, let's utilize all these features. Let me show you how cool this is. So I'll put two sensitive fields in here. I don't want these visible to everybody. So I'll get them in my order, then I'm going to secure them. And I want to make them completely invisible to everybody except those who I give this special privilege to. Whoops, I have to select the privileges created. Okay, so I've now secured them, and I also wanted to make it available when I'm tracking my sales. So I'll show you the connection with the sales applications too, because we've improved that. So I just set up that field. Now every time I create a project, I've got that. And we're just going to run through a couple, few more minutes. And I want what I want to show you is kind of the flow from opportunity into project to create a project template and show you the new improved process. So we still have the same existing template system. You'll see here, um, you'll have your templates there. Actually, if you have any existing templates, they will still display in here, but you'll probably want to edit them and add dependencies and utilize all the new features that we've added. So here, I've got a, a template for website development. And you can see it's configured with a set of standard milestones and a bunch of tasks inside. So I've got all this defined ahead of time, and I just generate a new project from this template every time. So let's say that I'm working on a sales opportunity. And forgive me, I'm going to do a little bit of a workaround here. Keep in mind the project system, it's not fully enabled, so um, I'm going to have to do a little bit of like changing URLs manually in order to make this work correctly. But okay, so I've got this sales opportunity, Bob Jones, and He wants a new website. So I'm working on this opportunity with him, and eventually I get to the point where we close a deal. So maybe I create an estimate or something like that, but for this case, let's just go straight to a project. One thing you'll see is I shared the project fields with Bob. So here I can type in his FCP username and password. Remember, this is only visible to select employees. And now I can convert it to a project. And here's where I have to do my little trickery. Hopefully this works. Beautiful. We'll see the website details there with all the fields. They came right through. So now you can cleanly flow. And I'd be able to go ahead and initiate that project. Right there. Okay. So let's see. We ran through just about everything. Um, didn't talk too much about this. Yeah, so let's just run through the settings and make sure we've covered the last few pieces. Um, oh, one is in the reports. You'll see we've added a few new reports, and there is also a few more to come. The biggest one is um, 
the reports on how many hours you've estimated for each project versus how many hours are currently logged in any project. Uh, we didn't have much reporting capabilities on that before. Now we have a couple reports built in and you can also expect more coming. And in the settings area, so we talked about the collaboration features. Um, you now have c control over the conversion flows. So let's say if you don't use timesheets, you can just disable that flow, no problem. You have the email template system. Um, currently, we don't have the attributes in here yet. That will be getting added in the next version. You can now configure the quick links that show up in the left column. So if you wanted to put a link to like an expense reporting system or something like that, you could do so. Uh, you can configure control over the reports to enable or disable them. Securities remain the same. Um, project budget, budget tracking, you can enable which types of projects that you want to support. And we've added the tax feature in the, into projects. And really, that's the last of the common features. So I think we're all set. Um, that'll end it for this presentation. I'm going to go ahead and upload this video onto YouTube at the end. So as far as your expectations for the Projects app moving forward, we're currently looking like it's about um, one to two weeks out. It's at the point now you can see we were able to click through. I mean, everything works generally the same. There are still a couple glitches. We, we need to make sure that this is absolutely perfect. So yes, our plan is that every weekend we are doing an update to this live environment. Um, and we will make it available to all the customers as soon as we possibly can. But our current estimate is still at one to two weeks. So thanks for everybody for attending. And hopefully we'll see you soon.